The one thing I really loved about the 90s, the cell phone was perfected. Can you imagine life without a cell phone now? You can't see from television. I want you to see a lab like your boy getting ready to see it. The 90s gave us the internet. But once we got into the 90s, everyone had kind of figured it out. Let's throw the ball. If you were a dot-com pioneer or an NFL quarterback, the 90s was a great decade. The only thing launching more frequently than URLs were football. Now throw side on that field. Charlotte, touchdown! I missed that decade. One word, Zubas. Zubaz pants and the quarterback skills competition. Throw accuracy at stationary objects in their Zubaz pants in Honolulu. Why? Were the 90s that, that horrible? Some 90s fashions may have been less than ideal, but the decade's quarterbacking was first class. Only the truly elite made our list, and all that matters is what they accomplished in the 90s. I think that's what the 90s did. It ushered in that era of the NFL becoming a passing league. I don't know, in the 90s, it just seemed like the position of quarterback became more about putting up big stats. He has the granddaddy of them all now. Most touchdown passes ever. And winning got shunted aside a little bit. Wins define everything in the National Football League and pretty much define your greatness. The number 10 quarterback of the 90s, Randall Cunningham. Number 10. Randall really was like the quintessential 90s quarterback. When I think of Randall, obviously dual with threat. Cunningham is going to run. He fires. You're in trouble against this guy because he can do things with his feet, with his arm, that you're not prepared to handle. The Randall Randall Show. What a rocket arm he had. Cunningham's going to throw into the end zone. Touchdown. And can get around anyone. Kept the play alive. Cunningham just made that play by You've got to be on this list if not only are you one of the best quarterbacks in the league, but you just so happen to lay down a 91-yard punt. That's impressive. Unbelievable punt. Randall Cunningham moved it out. That was a 91-yard punt. Randall Cunningham was the perfect 90s quarterback because he had the best high top fade ever. You know, I thought the flat top was money. Not that I could ever have one. It couldn't have been better. Randall Cunningham's fresh print style fade wasn't his only trend-setting endeavor. The two-time 90s Pro Bowler helped pave the way for a new generation of signal callers. It seems like he would have been perfect for this particular era, but the 90s, it was like the dawn of the athletic quarterback. The prototypical quarterback, seven-step drop, you know, down there, no mobility. All right, Randall Cunningham said, okay, I could do a lot more. People called me and they always say, why do you think you can fly? I said, I'm an eagle. I can get out of the pocket, I can make a play, I can throw the ball 90 yards down the field, I can run for a first down. I mean, he was the guy. Rolling with the football and being flattened at the 10, but throwing the ball and goes for a touchdown! What a great athlete he was. How limber he was, how flexible he was. Some of the things I did on the field, I don't know how I did them. I don't know how he did it. I think we're looking at Plastic Man. Cunningham is Plastic Man. You need to look no further than the play against the Bills. I was dropping back and I said, I know Bruce Smith is coming. He's about to be sacked in his own end zone. The split second I needed to, I ducked and he went over me. I said, whoa. He's looking. He's rolling. He's heaving a deep downfield from Barnett, who leaps and has it. Barnett's going to score! That's Randall Cunningham. Our number 10 QB's late 90s resurgence was rivaled only by the material girls. Randall Cunningham was Minnesota's ray of light. His 34 touchdown passes in 1998 helped the Vikings set an NFL scoring record. Randall's amazing because he basically had two careers. Randall had his first career and then Randall had 1998. He absolutely caught lightning in a bottle. Randall played so out of his mind that year. All three of those receivers were big, bad dudes. Jake Reed, Chris Carter, the touchdown maker, and then you got Randy Moss. It was by far his greatest season as a quarterback uh, throwing the football.
you know, living in Vegas, whatever, holding a normal job, comes back, has one of the greatest quarterback seasons ever, was score 500 points. Honestly made no sense, and yet it was wonderful. Coming up, is a great arm alone reason enough to make our list? I think the Jets have a quarterback for a few years to come in Vinny Testaverde. I know. That's just absurd. Were the 90s that, that horrible? Yeah, I, I don't know why he's on this list, to be honest with you. The 90s saw its fair share of one-year wonders, all in one year. 1995 was a year of quarterback nirvana. Eric Kramer doubled his career high with 29 touchdown passes. Touchdown, Eric Kramer to Curtis Conway. <laughs> the great Jeff Blake threw a career high 28. Yeah, baby. And who could forget Scott Mitchell? who passed for 32 touchdowns and more than 4,300 yards. What a grab! Touchdown, man! But none of them put up meaningless big numbers quite like our next quarterback. The number nine quarterback of the 90s, Jeff George. Is that right? I thought that was, was that? Wow. I was wondering if that was for real. Is he really one of the top ten quarterbacks? Can I come up with ten better right now? Maybe so, but can you find an arm that made everybody dance now? He can throw the ball like no other. What a play by Jeff George! His ability to just throw the football ranks above any quarterback that I've seen during that era. Jeff George throws right into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta! Nobody could throw back-to-back uh, -back passes, that, that, that soft touch pass that had to be delicate and really right on the money, and then turn around on the next play and throw a 71 and a half yard bullet. Just caught a bullet. Jeff George could throw both of those. Jeff George threw for over 26,000 yards in the 1990s, the seventh most of any player in the decade. I must have slept on his career stats, I must say. I plead guilty, NFL Network. But stats were never the issue for our number nine quarterback. Jeff George has one of the greatest arms in history, one of the quickest releases in history. He had everything you want in a franchise quarterback, but he didn't have it here. Anywhere Jeff George has been, he had turmoil and problems with either the play caller or the head coach. Yeah, these, these guys are going at it. Remember him going back and forth with June Jones on the sideline? Yep. Boy. That's just disrespect for authority. Isn't that all what the 90s was about? Every coach who got him felt like, I'm the guy who can turn this guy around. Take him right on down and put him in there, Jeffrey. He cultivated an entire decade based upon his potential because he threw the prettiest ball in football. He threw a pretty interception. Is there anyone who has like lived more on his arm strength than Jeff George? Jeff, Jeff has a very strong arm. He's the guy who like would fall down if the tackler got within five yards of him. But at least we have the mullet to look back on. Jeff George is living proof that the mullet causes brain damage. You know everything? Yeah. Oh. John Daly and Jeff George are your kind of the kings of the mullet. Business in the front, party in the back, and I don't know if that's ever a successful credo for an NFL quarterback. If the mullet makes the man, Jeff George would be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He played for the Falcons, he didn't have the mullet. He lost the mullet and all that was left was just surely Jeff George. It's hard to say he's a top 10 quarterback when he played for four different teams in the 90s. It says a lot about his sheer talent that even though he was acknowledged as a head case throughout his career, I know. he kept getting chance after chance after chance. Jeff George is throwing the ball accurately, short, uh, yeah. medium, and long today. Great talent, good fantasy quarterback, maybe a top 10 fantasy quarterback of the 90s. He's not a top 10 quarterback in my 90s. The number eight quarterback of the 90s. Bledsoe. People still love Bledsoe, man. You can go out to Gillette on any Sunday and you will see, I guarantee, a Bledsoe jersey tailgate. 
The prototypical guy. Big arm, gunslinger. Stood in the pocket, had a big arm. Just as a pure pocket passer, it's hard to say that's a better quarterback than Drew Bledsoe. That's the way to throw the ball, Drew. That's perfect throw, son. I, I just don't know. Like, I think that Drew was good. Oh, oh Drew's carving him up. I don't know if he even deserves to be on the list, to be honest with you. Totally fair spot. Drew Bledsoe does not belong on that list. Are you hurt, frustrated, or how do you feel? <laughs> Next question. Maybe Hugh Douglas can't handle the truth, but the first pick in the 1993 draft definitely belongs on this list. In the seven seasons Bledsoe played in the 90s, only Brett Favre threw for more yards and only Favre and Steve Young threw for more touchdowns. For a long stretch of time, Drew Bledsoe was as good as any passer in the National Football League. Bledsoe, play action, blows it left, open, touchdown. If I had to compare Bledsoe to any 90s pop culture icon, it would have to be Keanu Reeves. At speed's pinnacle, is anybody hotter than Keanu Reeves? You give me 93, 94, 95, Keanu hot, Bledsoe really hot. Play action fake, Bledsoe, end zone, touchdown! Look how nice that the ball comes out of his hand, see that? The nose rises just a little bit. Yeah, that, that, that was very impressive right there. He was a great thrower of the football. Best part of Drew Bledsoe, his arm. An 18 yard bullet. His arm. Great throw. His arm. The Patriots regain the lead on Drew Bledsoe's fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon. Worst part about his game, his mobility. We ran the option uh, for like one play in high school, and they ran it for one play in college. It's like, OK, well, we won't do that anymore. <laughs> Not even a broken finger could stop Bledsoe from launching more Patriot missiles than George Bush in the first Gulf War. How about that one by the Trumeister? Bledsoe threw for the second most yards per game in the decade, and the Patriots rode his right arm back to relevance. The Patriots win in overtime. He went to a bad New England team and lifted them to the point where you know, along with Bill Parcells, they actually won the AFC and went to a Super Bowl. He was not the quarterback who, who ultimately brought them a championship, but he did so much to turn the, turn the fortunes of that organization around. Everybody remembers him now as the guy Tom Brady replaced, but the truth was he was a pretty good quarterback. In 1996, Bledsoe led the Patriots to the Super Bowl, but that may not have been his defining moment. Dude threw 70 passes in a game and didn't throw an interception. Fires it long and deep right side. Caught! Touchdown! For him to throw 70 passes with Parcells on the sideline. Back to throw. Looks close to the end zone. Touchdown! The Patriots win! That's special. Up next, the quarterback that passed with most yards in pro football history. Let's go! Let's go! We got some big plays coming. He threw for 21,000 yards before he got to the NFL. The 90s taught us that being a top draft pick does not guarantee success. You don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off! A few first-round talents didn't live up to the hype. Leaf throws intercepted. Bad decision. But some hidden gems honed their skills on foreign soil before enjoying NFL success. The throw party wide open. Touchdown, Aaron Bowles. And no one traveled further than Kurt Warner. Let's go win it right now. Just watching that guy go from the grocery bagger to Super Bowl champion is amazing. We will rally around Kurt Warner and we'll play good football. St. Louis, the gateway to the West, is now the gateway to the best. Our number seven QB wasn't bagging groceries, but he wasn't drafted either. <laughs> the number seven quarterback of the 90s, Warren Moon. Warren Moon is by far one of the most underrated players in NFL history. Moon to throw from the shotgun, deep down the middle for Jeffrey. He gets the 30, he is going to score. He threw a pretty ball. He threw a catchable ball. Another perfect pass by Warren Moon. One of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Moon. Very deep. Looking deep down the middle, has the man Drew Hill, touchdown! I think he should be a little bit higher up this list, quite frankly. 
Warren Moon has been fighting for his rightful spot in history since going undrafted in 1978. Determined to play quarterback at the professional level, Moon took his talents north of the border, where he rewrote the record books. I just want to once again underscore, he won five Grey Cups before he came to the NFL. Moon, he steps up and fires. Tom Scott is wide open. Touchdown. He threw for 21,000 yards before he got to the NFL. When Warren Moon came to the NFL from the Canadian League, he was out to show the world that the NFL made a mistake when they didn't even draft him. Our number seven QB did more than prove he belonged. He passed for the most yards per game in the decade. Moon threw more touchdown passes in the 90s than John Elway. Boom, short drop, looking for Jeffrey's got a touchdown! Some will tell you his stats were blown up a bit because he played in the run and shoot. But boy, in Canada, he didn't play in a run and shoot offense, but he won five straight great cups. Warren Moon played in a run and shoot for three years, but he had his greatest season statistically with Minnesota when Dennis Green was a coach and he ran a normal pro style offense. That's it! Round 20! The great thing about Warren Moon to me was that no matter what offense he was in, no matter what system he put him in, no matter what coach he played with, he was an accurate, great downfield thrower of the ball. That goes Warren Moon. So regardless of what offense this guy was in, he still put up huge numbers. So why isn't Moon higher than seventh on our list? He's like, okay, you know he's going to put up huge numbers, but can he win? He only had one playoff win in the decade. Hard to blame Warren Moon for some of the bad defenses he had. It wasn't that he didn't embody winning. It was just that for whatever reason, he didn't win. Let's go now. Let's get off to a good start tonight. Let's do our work. Let's do it right. Let's get it done today. A win on three. One, two, three. Win! Yeah, Warren Moon deserves on this list. He had a Hall of Fame career in the CFL before he had an NFL Hall of Fame career. Warren Moon is, is an incredible story because you think of how great his career in the NFL would have been if it had all been in the NFL. The number six quarterback of the 90s, Jim Kelly. You're not giving Jim Kelly enough credit here. At number six, this is a joke. Sorry, Jim Kelly's offense made him a great quarterback. Kelly to throw. Short drop. Reed right on the money. Great thing about Jim Kelly, he was a trigger man of a complex offense and could do it all himself. He's Terry Bradshaw of his generation. Bradshaw and Kelly may have a lot in common, but when it comes to championships, they are polar opposites. Both made four trips to the Super Bowl, but Bradshaw has four rings, Kelly has none. The Bills dominated the first half of the decade like Forrest Gump at the box office. But instead of run Forrest run, it was throw Jimmy throw. Hey, the K-Gun was one of the great offenses of the 90s. Takes the snap, backs up, will throw. He's got a touchdown. That's what you got to do. Jim Kelly was his own offensive coordinator. Jim Kelly carried that offense and that football team in so many respects. I think one of the things about Kelly that's really underrated is how smart he was as a player. It is amazing how fast his, his brain worked. I mean, he saw the field and, and snapped off the plays uh, as rapidly as anybody could. Here's Kelly to throw. He pulls it down, throws, reaches it at the 30, and in for the touchdown. Jim Kelly's probably the most unlucky guy in the history of the NFL. Maybe more than any other quarterback in football this side of Dan Marino, it's unfortunate that, that he never won a Super Bowl. Some is going to win, some is going to lose, but you know, you always think, uh, why? Kelly came up small in the Super Bowls. Kelly on a bootleg. Kelly's touchdown interception ratio in the Super Bowls, two to seven. Kelly to throw, hit as he throws it out. I think Jim has taken far too much of the blame for the four Super Bowl losses. No matter what, you think of him as a four-time Super Bowl loser. Not the guy who got to four Super Bowls. Not the guy who finally made the Buffalo Bills into a good football team. He throws to the end zone, Fox, touchdown! And the fact that he wasn't able to win despite going to four Super Bowls, 
I think is just unfortunate for him in his career and unfortunate for loyal Buffalo Bills fans. I believe that Jim Kelly taking his team to four consecutive Super Bowls might be something that never accomplished again. And to have him at sixth is, is ridiculous. A really successful career, but he just couldn't get there. You know what? He was the Donovan McNabb of the 90s. Kelly to pass. He throws. Touchdown. Incredible. There's so many great things you could say about Jim Kelly, but he's the guy who lost four Super Bowls. Jim Kelly deserved better. He was a great quarterback. For my money, Jim Kelly was as good a quarterback as we saw in the 90s. Yeah, I think it's just silly that he's sixth. Up next. You think God never farted? What quarterbacking legend was top five in multiple decades? He was a gunslinger. That's the best way to sum him up. I ain't never been part of this where you can take it down the field that fast. Yeah. <laughs> five quarterback of the 90s, Dan Marino. Five? Five. The most electrifying quarterback in the history of the National Football League. Five? Steps out to the right side, throws into the end zone. And it's caught! It's a touchdown! Dolphin! Five? Really? Dan Marino's only number five? The guy busted his Achilles, came back, and threw for 4,000 yards the year after that. Danny Marino is back, baby! How can you make him number five? Who made this freaking list? Who is doing these rankings? Uh, Dan Marino fifth. Good God Almighty! Marino at number five is a travesty. They have a point. Our number five quarterback of the 90s is best known for his work in the 80s. What a game by Marino! But Marino actually threw for more yards in the 90s. Dan Marino of the 90s pretty much was just the same guy in the 80s. That just shows you how good Marino was because he could be the quarterback of the 80s and an encapsulating quarterback of the 90s too. Throws near side, man down there, spot a score, touchdown. The more veteran quarterback in the 90s was better than the young quarterback in the 80s. Man, oh man, oh man! The signature moment of Dan Marino's career came in 1994. 30 seconds to go, I believe Marino is saying I'm going to spike it. Marino takes the snap from center, he throws oh, it! Touchdown, Dolphins! That was oh, unbelievable! Oh, he wanted the ball. You were never out of a game with Marino as your quarterback. Dan Marino, no one questions that he's not a great quarterback, but there's something missing. He didn't win a Super Bowl. Even Ace Ventura couldn't find Dan Marino in a Super Bowl after 84. Our number five quarterback of the 90s never found his way back to the big show. Throws intercepted. Going three and seven playoffs during the 90s. Miami Dolphins have self-destructed in this game. If he had won even one Super Bowl, he would be known as the best quarterback ever. Ironically, it was the best coach of the 90s, Jimmy Johnson. How about the Cowboys? Yeah! Who sealed his decline. Once the coaching staff changed. I ain't never been part of this where you can take it down the field that fast. He went into a offense that he couldn't check off. There were no hot reads. That's a joke. And you've got a 17-year veteran playing in an offense that's suited for high school. The funniest Marino thing to me is when you get to him and bring him down, the first thing he's going to say is, you got me. All right. Then look at his lineman. You fat slug. Give me some time to throw a five-yard out. The 90s is the time when he just got old, surly. Gimpy legs and... Dan Marino's probably looking right now at Mark Clayton, Mark Ingram. You got the one-on-one, bump and run, you got to win. All those guys are getting yelled at right now. Get that out of here, get that out of here. Then he's going to throw a Gatorade glass on the floor because he's number five on the list. <laughs> the number four quarterback of the 90s, Steve Young. Number four. If you were building the quintessential quarterback, it would be Steve Young. The man could do it all. Talk about a five-tool athlete. He's a five-tool quarterback. Young throws down for Jerry Rice. He's got it. Touchdown 49ers. What a play by Steve Young. 
Steve Young was a wild man. Psycho! Psycho! Me! This is the psycho! In an exhibition game, his helmet falls off during the course of a game. What does he do? He cuts it back upfield and gets about 15 more yards. A lot of people forget, you know, how good of a runner he was. Our number four quarterback of the 90s was a runaway train, rushing for more yards than any quarterback in the decade. Young averaged over six yards per carry in the 90s. That athleticism sometimes overshadowed the rest of Steve Young's game. And again the bootleg. Young unbelievably this time throws. He gets it to Brett Jones into the end zone. Better athlete. Better athlete than quarterback, I would say. But a much larger shadow loom. Number one quarterback of the 80s, Joe Montana. Montana is still the best and he always will be. Steve Young had the burden of having to live up the expectations for following Joe Montana, and I think that's tough on a guy. Joe was more of a quarterback, and Steve was more of an athlete, so I know that'll upset Steve very much to hear that. For a brain your size, you're not really acting very smart. But when you go back and look at the numbers, Steve Young had five seasons where he had passer ratings over 100. Young drops back to throw, pass to the end zone. Joe Montana had four. Hey, Coach, I'm way better. And yet, most people pay no attention to Steve Young. Well, uh, please, get a response for that. I'd like to know. Steve Young might have played the position better than Joe Montana. Steve Young replaced Joe Montana, replaced the legend, and right away, he's an MVP. In his second season as San Francisco's starting quarterback, Steve Young won league MVP. He has got rid of some things on his shoulder. Two years later, he did it, baby, one more time and lost a monkey in the process. Someone take the monkey off my back, please! Thank you, Stop it! It's gone forever! Steve Young also had the highest quarterback rating and winning percentage of any quarterback on our list. The ball had to be perfect. It was! Niners will win it! Niners will win it! Nobody had as much rushing value Nobody had as much passing value, and nobody else did it year after year the way he did. Steve Young, one of the courageous games I've ever seen in a pro football player's career, just the stuff of legend. Steve Young was the best quarterback of the 90s, period. But he's not. And when we return, find out whether it's stats or rings that determine our number three QB. Most overrated quarterback in all of the nights. When you start really breaking down what this game is about, it's about winning. There were six QBs in the 90s good enough to lead their teams to the Super Bowl, but whose total body of work in the decade couldn't crack our list. Touchdown! Among this group, only two were able to bring home the ultimate prize. Something that they said would never happen, couldn't happen. Uh, here we are, we won the Super Bowl. This ring right here doesn't mean, gosh, I was great. I had to play great cheer. These are memories. Good protection again, going deep. He's got Clark in the end zone, touchdown. And no quarterback on our list has had more celebratory Super Sundays than our next quarterback. Number three quarterback of the 90s, Troy Aikman. If he were a college quarterback, you would call him a system quarterback. He doesn't get enough credit for being a fantastic quarterback. As time going for the end zone, he's got a man. It's caught for a touchdown. I think Troy Aikman could even be number one. Troy Aikman is the most overrated quarterback in all of the 90s, maybe even all of football at this point. Damn it! No, I think Aikman is number one because rings count for something. Perhaps no player on our list has a more polarizing presence than Troy Aikman. The Cowboy QB passed for fewer yards per game than Jim Everett, but he does have three Lombardi trophies. You can celebrate because your Cowboys are world champions. To me, he was more of a product of the team he played for. He played with Emmitt Smith, Michael Irvin, two amazing players. He played with the best offensive line in football. Keep playing, guys. Keep playing. Nice job. I mean, that was such a loaded team. Showtime. 
Troy's got three rings for a reason. Yes, he played with Emmett and Michael, but they also fed off him. This man right here was our leader. Without no Troy, there's no Michael catching that rock. Without no Troy, there's no Emmett Smith running the rock the way that I was able to run it. I thought he really was the guy that supplied the focus, the fire, and the leadership uh, to those Dallas teams. Hey guys, that's a f embarrassment out there! Junior League! When you think about that Dallas Cowboy dynasty, that era, what type of quarterback you need to lead that group of guys, it's Troy Aikman. He's perfect. He looks the part, he plays the part, he is the part. Hey guys, let's go out and have a little fun tonight, all right? Go win on three. One, two, three, win! win. All he ever cared about is, what do you want me to do to help the team win? We needed to win. And uh, for that reason, it was nice. If they just said to Troy, you know what, Troy, we're going to start throwing the ball 35 or 40 times a game, he'd have put up unbelievable numbers. He is the most accurate quarterback I have ever seen. I'm telling you, if I close my eyes to run 10 routes, I believe eight of them would have hit me right in the hands. Aikman's detractors will argue that our number three QB only surpassed 20 touchdowns once in his career. Left corner of the end zone, he caught it for a touchdown! But in the postseason, Aikman was unstoppable, completing 64% of his passes and tossing 23 touchdowns. When you look at his career, you say, okay, what did he do in the championship games? Aikman, a straight drop. This guy was always on fire. When Aikman needed to step up and be brilliant in games, he was. Troy Aikman's the MVP, and Dallas, your Cowboys are champions. When you start really breaking down the whole idea of what this game is about, it's about winning. I think Jim Kelly was a better quarterback than Troy Aikman. I think Dan Marino was a better quarterback than Troy Aikman by far. But Troy Aikman won, and rightly or wrongly, in the NFL, that's how we rate our quarterbacks. Who won the most? If Troy Aikman's number three, and he won three Super Bowls in the decade, I'm not sure what else he had to do to be the number one guy of the decade. Up next, could Super Bowl 32 determine our number one? I just think when we talk about judging the position, we judge it with rings. This one's for John. That one game didn't decide somebody's career legacy. Many of the decade's best quarterbacks fell just short of the big dance. Jim Harbaugh, Mark Brunell, and Vinny Testaverde led their teams to great seasons that ended one game short of the Super Bowl. Where at least one guy thinks Pittsburgh would have been with better handling of the man they call Slash. Good job, Slash. This guy in 1997 threw for 20 touchdowns, rushed for another 11. Touchdown, Steelers! If they didn't bring in three offensive coordinators in four years, Cordell Stewart would have been on that list and pretty high. But both Stewart and Testaverde lost in the AFC Championship to our next quarterback. Number two quarterback of the 90s, John Elway. Number two. I think John Elway should be number one. John Elway has done it again. No, oh, right. He got what Jim Kelly and Dan Marino never got, a couple of Super Bowls, and boy, doesn't that make a difference. What you don't realize is that in the 90s, even before he wins the Super Bowls, there's a 12-4 and four year and a 13-3 and three year. This is about as good a throw as I've ever seen him make. And two seasons of Wade Phillips. That's greatness. Set it. Our number two quarterback of the 90s was a natural fit in the American West, leaving tombstones scattered in his wake. John Elway has done it again. He was a gunslinger. That's the best way to sum him up. And the Denver Broncos with another fantastic comeback. John Wayne and Cleats. They love me. Complete with the gate. It was like he was playing with the cowboy hat and the holster. And hey, a dip. Dip. It's like the wild, wild west playing football. Elway's to the end zone. Man, the uh, 
a personification, I think, of just give me the ball at the end of the game. I'm going to make it happen. This guy will go down as the greatest cover behind player in National Football League history. I think Elway was maybe better in the 80s. I have never seen a guy move that kind of arm in my life. The ball moved so fast, I turned my head and it was there. But I think the way he played in the 90s and the fact that he won proved that he was as good in the 90s, if not, if not even better. Than that. Time after time after time, he does it. In the 90s, you saw him bring the team up to a whole nother level. Fans and media, especially cynical media, were so happy when he won a Super Bowl. Throws down deep the middle of the field. Brad Smith's got it. It was like God had a hand in it. This one's for John. He got what he deserved in the end, but boy, it was a close shave. So why is John Elway just second on our list? If John Elway had won those two Super Bowls at the end of his career, they would still be hanging him in effigy in Denver today. I think some of his better years when he went to those first three Super Bowls and lost. This one is history. By the time he got to the 90s, he wasn't as prolific. It's fitting that in a decade whose best known show was about doing nothing, John Elway's championship years didn't involve too much more. Davis hand up, first down, Terrell Davis. Though his winning ways earned him second on our list, Elway doesn't rank higher than fourth in the decade for any major statistical category. 50 yards on the carry for Terrell Davis. Numbers aside, no one can take away the fairy tale ending for our number two quarterback of the 90s. You know in the Western, where you get the cowboy, and the cowboy can't figure it out, and the bad guy's getting the best of him, and then at the end, he rides off into the sunset after saving the girl? That's what happened to John Elway in the 90s. He was the cowboy who rode off into the sunset. When we return... Someone else should be above Favre, just on principle. You may be sick of Brett Favre, but we aren't. Who, who made the list? Madden? I mean, come on. Just the way they drew it up, huh, fellas? <laughs> it's just a crock. There's no way Brett Favre is number one. No way. Before we reveal the number one quarterback of the 90s... Hey, Coach, I'm way better. Let's review the rest of our top ten. Number ten, Randall Cunningham dazzles even himself. Some of the things I did on the field, I don't know how I did them. Number nine, the mere presence of Jeff George leaves our panel puzzle. I must have slept on his career stats. Number eight. Drew Bledsoe reigns Patriot Missiles. That's the way to throw the ball, Drew. For a long stretch of time, Drew Bledsoe was as good as any passer in the National Football League. Number seven, Warren Moon launches more than the run and shoot. Regardless of what offense this guy was in, he still put up huge numbers. Number six, Jim Kelly put on a K-Gun show in Buffalo. He's got a touchdown. That's what you got to do. He was one of the fun guys to watch in the 90s. Number five, Dan Marino. But neither he nor our panel are satisfied. So, five, five, five. Number four, Steve Young's scrambling never gets old. One man to get by, carries him into the end zone. Number three, three rings for the man of Troy. All he ever cared about is what do you want me to do to help the team win? Number two. The master of the two-minute drill, John Elway. This one's for John. And now, the number one quarterback of the 90s, Red Ball. Number one. No, you have it wrong. You're making me sick. Would I call him the best of a whole decade? I don't know about that. Oh, we're going to give him. NFL Films loves Brett Favre, obviously. And... There was a period there in the 90s where Favre and the Packers seemed absolutely unbeatable. We really built our defense around stopping Green Bay in the 90s. Who can throw it better than Brett Favre? Brett was the toughest matchup we ever had to face. Holy cow! You think about him with Reggie White resurrecting the Green Bay Packers and then running around the field with that helmet raised. Brett Favre was the 90s. 
Brett Favre burst into the league with unbridled enthusiasm. You might even say teen spirit. 23 seconds left. I'll drive out anywhere. We call two jet all go, and he threw a laser. Saw Lambeau Field that day, the excitement in that crowd. These fans are going crazy. It was unbelievable. Quarterbacks that I've seen, he has to rank number one. I think for a guy who is just fun to watch. The way he could improvise, the way he made a game exciting. He flips it into the end zone, touchdown, three bang. You see him pitch a ball underhand. Just the way they drew it up, huh, fellas? <laughs> a lot of that's just his attitude. No more rocket balls, please. Well, I've teamed up. No, I know. I used to think it was hysterical, though, watching Holmgren just fume on the sidelines and fart. Can he play? Does he know what to do? Throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. Why doesn't we have... Why didn't he... He threw some of the most spectacular bonehead interceptions in the history of great quarterbacks. If you didn't think it could get any more ugly, it is. That was a life we lived for three years there. It was exciting, man. He has caught from behind, got away. Still ah, a touchdown. Holy cow. But Brett Favre was more than just fun to watch. He won three consecutive MVP awards. What a play by Brett Favre. Looks comes over the middle. Super Bowl 31. It's got a wide open. It is going to be a touchdown to Andre Wright. And when you have Brett Favre and you have a Super Bowl championship, what'd you expect? You know, I'm surprised it was as mild as it was. No, he's number one. Come on. In the 90s, he had 23 or more interceptions in three different seasons. And bad just got worse. The Aikman won three rings. Three times as many as Favre. Aikman didn't lose a Super Bowl. Favre, pass is going to be incomplete. Denver's going to win it. Oh, wait, beat Brett Favre in the Super Bowl. How does he How does he get a notch below? And he won two, two Super Bowls? No, that's stupid. Brett Favre being number one is a flat-out joke. We're not underrating Super Bowl victories. For goodness sakes, if Troy Aikman doesn't have those three Super Bowl rings, where does he rank on this list? 10th, 15th, 20th? Emmett Smith, touchdown! For John Elway, for Troy Aikman in the 90s, those Super Bowl rings are the calling card. Those guys are just about where they belong on this list. To have Brett Favre as the number one quarterback in the 90s, it's kind of ridiculous. Who, who made the list, Madden? I mean, come on. It's, it's a joke. Brett Favre is not number one. There's no way Brett Favre is number one. You know, look, I like Brett Favre. I don't think everybody loves Brett Favre. Okay, wait a second. No, I don't like Brett Favre. I respect Brett Favre. Someone else should be above Favre just on principle. I don't know how you don't love a guy like this. He's what epitomizes the sport. Brett Favre has turned into like this big mountain. You might not like the mountain, but you can't ignore the mountain. What he did in that decade was that he dominated. What is that? Comeback number 15, Wayne. He dominated the early part. He dominated the middle. He dominated the end. He dominated discussions. I gotta see this. This Favre out here. Brett Favre. He has to rank number one. He's at the top of my list. He's the best quarterback in the 90s, and he's probably the toughest matchup we ever had to face. There's no way Brett Favre is number one. No way.